God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Apostle Jenkins. It's a Tuesday morning, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. God bless everybody and welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. As always, me and my wife, I can take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate all those that support uh, this ministry and God bless you. As always, we ask you to do a couple of things. Good to see you, Tracy. Just go ahead and hit that share button. Share this on your page. Sister Polly, God bless you. Sister Jan, God bless you. We appreciate all those from all over the world, Sister Bridges, amen. Good morning, good morning. It's a Tuesday morning, excited today. Uh, dealing with part two, uh, facing a angry cane, facing a angry cane. I'm telling you, this particular teaching is gonna change our lives. It's definitely gonna put us in a proper perspective of how to see cane, how to see ourselves. And it's gonna help us align ourselves so that we can have a greater uh, expression of victory. We know we always fight from victory, uh, not for it, but it's going to show us how to have it in manifestation. One of the great things about being a Christian is that not only do we declare something, but we're able to manifest it. So good to see everybody this morning. Sister Kimberly, amen. Sister, do amen, everybody. Just God bless you. Go ahead and hit that share button. Hit those shares. This is a world message this is a world message it's for the nations okay this is something that every person that's ever been born that had time to live uh will experience emotion they will experience the mindset of cain how to deal with uh emotions that are not stable and so uh it's a very powerful teaching we're going to go into prayer uh, then I'm going to share some things with you, and then we're going to go into teaching. But thank God for everybody. I see Brother Mike. I see uh, Sister Diane, uh, Roberto. God bless you, man. Thank God for you. Thank God. Remember, be praying extensively. I, I asked you yesterday, please, I need intercessors. Uh, and, 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 you know, certain things that already happened. I said I wanted people to really pray. I have to. I have to have a covering over my life. Me and my wife, we have to have a covering. So we need y'all to cover, especially at this level of teaching and anointing. Uh, the devil is very uh, upset. And so we, we just want to be covered. Uh, we thank God for the maturity that I know how to handle being in battle. And um, you will get shot. You will get hit. Uh, but you won't die. <laughs> and so we thank God for it. Okay. So they won't prosper. It don't mean that they won't work, but they won't prosper. The, the, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God, the devil can't finish his assignment on us. Okay. And so Paul talked about all the things he'd been through, but he made it. He finished his course. And so this is the key. And so we're going to go into prayer. Go ahead and hit that share button. Invite people out. Go ahead and do uh, watch parties. You can do that. But the Michael Jones, God bless you, man. Love you so much. And so we're going to move into this. Father, we thank you right now. First for a brand new day, a brand new day to do your will, a brand new day to speak your words, a brand new day to walk into your glory, a brand new day to experience your power. Lord, we thank you for the hunger and thirst. We thank you. We went to bed last night with you on our mind and that we able to stay focused on our purpose and our passion. Thank you, Lord, for your consistency, that you're always faithful and you love us. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. God, we bless you for all that you're doing and all that you're saying into our lives. Thank you for this increase, this move, this push forward, this growing us up, this stretching, the challenging. God, thank you, Lord, that you're not leaving us in the place of perversion. You're not leaving us in a place of undevelopment, but you're constantly speaking truth to us to bring us to a place to challenge us so that when you come, we shall be like you. God, we thank you for all that you're doing, the divine connections that you have uh, put us to. And we thank you, Lord, for how you're moving, for how you're moving in our lives, how you're moving things in and moving things out. God, we ask you right now to cover your people, assign angels to our mind, north, east, south, and west. God, we ask for a divine covering over our lives. God, we know that our steps are ordered by the Lord. We know, Lord, that you have already declared what's going to be in our lives. You said that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. So thank you, Lord, for being a father. Thank you, Lord, for being a provider. Thank you, Lord, for being uh, giving us visions and how to see where we're going and allow us to see afar. God, we thank you, Lord, for the love that you have entrusted us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, to bless those that be spitefully use you. Thank you, Lord, that you have equipped us and you have given us equipment that prepares us for any battle. Thank you, Lord, that we know how to put on the whole arm of God, that we'll be, be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And God, we give you praise in advance for the blessings 
that are already flowing in our lives, for the increase that is already flowing in our lives, for the power of God that is moving in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for families becoming one. We thank you, Lord, for relationships becoming one. We thank you, Lord, for the remnant, God. We thank you, Lord, for the move of the Spirit that's going to begin to transform people and convert them into who they call to be. Oh, God, we thank you for your forgiveness, God. Forgive us for anything we have said or done that was offensive to the Holy Spirit, that was offensive to heaven, God. And God, we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and that we'll be able to stand righteous before you because we stand in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for redemption. Thank you, Lord, for sanctification. God, we bless you for what you're doing and how you're moving and you're helping us to locate ourselves so that we can become more like you. At the end of the day, it's all about becoming more like you. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for all things. Amen. God bless everybody. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. Please hit that share button and share this on your page. Got a couple of announcements. First announcement is uh, it's exciting time. I, I got a, um, a text yesterday from the editor that my, my book is released as far as the pre-orders. You can pre-order the new book that is out. It's called 33 Confessions. It is a book based upon uh, Jesus walking the earth 33 and a half years and that you make these confessions is really dealing with losing weight in the mind. And so the things we must say to ourselves uh, positive sayings from the word of God that cause our mind to be transformed. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So it's 33 confessions and you can pre-order the book now. Now this is very important. You have until uh, really yesterday, yesterday until the 21st of this month, they're taking pre-orders in Barnes and Nobles. I've been sending out the flyers. Please support me for those who come on on a regular basis, who believe in what God has given me to say, who, who, who there's a, a agreement in your spirit. Uh, please do that. There's a new book out. You know, the first book was the, the uh, journey, uh, the journey of false perceptions, and that book is still available. But this is a brand new book, and I really want to push it. Uh, sometimes we don't always do what we need to do in God. And I, I felt like on the first book that I dropped the ball. And I, and I go through that when I review my life, different things in my life that I feel like I, I could have stepped up or did more. I was in total in submission to God. Like I told you last year when it came to the homeless and even this year, it's already May and, and, and we haven't did it. And so there's things that God constantly push in me. And that's the thing when you're dealing with God. Uh, he's going to constantly push on you where he wants you to be. That's his love. That's his love. And so his love is going to constantly chastise you or correct you or pull on you on things you need to do. And so this book I want to do better on. I want to push it. And so please support me by doing a pre-order. You can pre-order your paperback book now. You can do that on Barnes & Nobles. And then it will be ready uh, in paper form where you can order the book uh May 21st, okay? But I really want the pre-orders to be large. That has everything to do with how they uh, categorize the book. And I really, this is what I'm expecting. And this is what, uh, I just believe that God has given me something for the world. And so help this book become a bestseller. And let me just share some things because we're talking about emotions. You know, a lot of times you can become jealous. You can become envy. Uh, the devil can attack your emotions because you have an expectation of where you believe you should be. I talked about it yesterday that one of the, the dangers to the Cain mentality is that it has an expectation. Sometimes it's not lined up. When, matter of fact, majority of the time when we're talking about Cain, because Cain is a mindset that is against God. It is the mindset. It is the mind. Mindset. When you take on a cane mindset, it's the fleshly mindset. It is the carnal mindset. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It cannot please God. That's what the Bible refers to when he's talking about the carnal mind. Cain is a representation of the carnal mind. It is the religious mind. It is the mind that believes in itself that it can produce something by its own will, by its own intellect. You know what I'm saying? So that's very key that we understand that. You know, kind of moving into the teaching now. But when you have this mindset, but sometimes this Cain mindset, you become carnal, 
because of your emotions. And that's what I'm really trying to tie into the carnal mind. There are three things inside of the mind, okay? And that is your emotions, how you feel. That is your intellect, what you think. And that is your will, what you choose. In the emotional part of us is where strongholds lie in. In the, in the, in the, in the emotional part of us, okay? In our emotions, what I call energy in motion, emotion. That is where the strongholds can gather you because you feel a certain way. You've experienced something. You can't tell me how I feel. And these emotions will really put a stronghold on you. And they will create an attitude. They will create an attitude, which ultimately takes you to an altitude. But they will create an attitude. And so a lot of times, and I'm still talk talking about my book, a lot of times the enemy comes in your emotions based upon your expectations. So let's say... Uh, and I'm a reader. I love to go to the library. Uh, I, I buy books consistently uh, from various places. And a lot of times I'll read books and I'm just being honest and open because that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, being honest and open about your emotions. I'll read books and I'll say, wow, how did this book become a bestseller? And I'll look at it. Now, we're we talking real. We're taking off all titles, no apostle, no prophet, just being real. And I'll say, how does this book become a bestseller? My book has... So much more to offer why my book is not. And you can get tied down to that emotion. For years, I was depressed. And a lot of my depression came from uh, my expectation of where I thought I should be by now. My book should be out. Why I'm not traveling across the world. And you may feel the same way. Why am I not married? Why don't I not have kids? Why am I not making more money? All these emotional things can bring you to a Cain mentality. Okay? Because they all deal with you feeling rejected. Or you feeling ostracized. And all those things. And Cain represents that he stands when how we see how that operates. Now, we have to, and the whole key of the message is that we have to live this life while raising Cain. The flesh will never be saved, okay? Your mind must be renewed, I feel the anointing. And so it's so important that I got to know how to live when these mentalities show up, when these mindsets show up. I got to still know how to live and fulfill my destiny in God. I still have to feel my assignment. But these thoughts are real, and many times we're not able to have a successful life because we're not honest about these emotions. We're not honest about these strongholds. We're not honest about this carnal mind that's tied to how I feel that is enmity against God. And so I never find myself manifesting, not declaring, but manifesting what God said for me. I can't come into a level of maturity because I don't know how to deal with Cain. Okay, so I got to face them. Okay, and so I'm just giving you some realities. And so back to the book. And so a lot of times I feel like this and this I'm dealing with emotions, all the feelings that come up. Why don't people support me? Because uh, many people will hear you but not follow you. Many people like I may have four or five hundred people that may come on every morning. But if I started the church and let's say these people were in the city, would they really come to the church? Even when I was pastoring church, I had people who would call me for counseling at night and then go be a part of somebody else's church the following morning. That's a reality. But the reality is, how do you deal with these emotions? Now, I'm saying that again because everything that happens in your life, the enemy will look for, watch this, because Cain is what you live with. It is your flesh. You live in skin. You will deal with these thoughts, okay? That's why when it comes to spiritual warfare, you got to deal with these thoughts that exalt themselves again. The knowledge of God. You got to deal with these imagination, these strongholds. Strongholds are your emotions, how you feel. And so, in anything that you go through in life, Cain could show up in that emotion. Anything. How you feel about a car, how you feel about what they said to you, how you feel about what you have on, how you feel about uh, where you're living at right now, how you feel about your neighbors, how you feel about everything can become a stronghold. And this is where the Cain mentality shows up because he lived with you when you're real. Would do good. Evil is always present. There's another law in your members bringing you in captivity. These laws in your members are nothing but thoughts or agreements or alignments that you have never faced and brought the word of God. You got to bring Christ. You got to bring Christ to Cain. You got to bring Christ to Cain. And so, so I'm dealing with this because I want to be honest with you and transparent. Another reason why, uh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost that we're not always successful on earth as we should be or could be is because we don't talk about enough about Cain. Cain got to be talked to. 
okay? And Cain got to be dealt with. You got to face him. And every single day you have to face him, okay? In things. So here it comes again. Now, why are you saying this, uh, Apostle Jenkins? This is why I'm saying this. <laughs> because for years, one of my strongholds was that my books will never get out. I'm confessing, like many of us, we confessed yesterday about our anger, and we're confessing. You got to be transparent, because you got to talk to Cain. Remember, Cain did not talk to God about how he really was feeling. He shared something with his brother. We don't know what he shared with his brother, but when he was done talking, he killed him. And so there's a whole lot of things that if you don't have the right conversation and talk to the right people about, when you're done talking, you may correct commit a crime. This is what the Bible says. Be angry. Don't avoid your emotions. Don't avoid your feelings. But sin not. Sin comes after the emotion. Sometimes during it. Okay? Very key. This is why he tells Cain, look here, Cain, why have your continents fallen? Why are you upset? Because I did not accept your offering. He said, why are you upset? You know if you do right, I will accept it. But if you don't do right... That's because sin is right at the door of your heart. There's a desire that you have, and that desire that you have and that stopped me from receiving your offering, it, it will rule you. It says that desire, it will rule you. And Cain has been running our life when you're designed to be led by the Spirit, not to be led by Cain. But Cain automatically takes the lead when you don't face this mentality. You don't face it. What's what man think of? So is he. So if you don't face this mentality, you got to deal with it. So you got to talk about, hey man, when your book came out, how did you feel? Did the people support you? Did you feel like people was behind you? And see all these things. And so we can be helpers one to another. We can be our brother's keepers when we can have real healthy conversation about our emotions, about everything in life. If I have a friend, I have a couple friends, great friend, one of them is on right now, Brother Gilbert Rucker. I got, how you feel about that? How did you feel about that? How did you feel about uh, a relationship? How do you feel about whatever happened to you in life? And we go back and forth in our emotions. My wife is my best friend. How did you feel about that? When the children didn't call or when the job didn't come through. How did you feel about that when your music wasn't embraced? All of these things are important, okay? So I'm sharing this with you. Now, Now, why am I sharing this with you when we're talking about my book? Because I want you to help me deal with an area that the enemy in the past have was able to get a foothold in. We can't grow together if we don't begin to see one another's nakedness without being shamed or guilty, okay? So it's very important to me. Now, the things that God has given me is very important to me. And there's a whole lot of things that's important to you. And the reason why you have, Cain has been successful ruling you, because you haven't really talked to your husband about your real feelings. You haven't really talked to your wife about your real feelings. You haven't really talked to your sons and daughters about your real feelings. And most of the times, when we have these real talks, we 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 do just like Cain and Abel. We slay our brother. We may not kill him physically, but we destroy them with our words. We destroy them with our words because we haven't learned how to talk. Be angry, but, but don't sin. Don't divide. Don't separate. Learn to love one another. See, but this comes through conversation. This comes through honesty. I need to know the weight of your expectation. If this don't come through for you, how much will this destroy you? How much would it change your opinion about people? If this, if this person doesn't say the things you think he should say, if she don't agree with you or he don't agree with you, whatever the case may be, what happens when it's over? Is there, is there a separation? Do you still believe every joint supply? Do you still believe that we have to work together? Do you still believe in unity? Is that still your brother, your sister, your mother, your father? How do you feel about life? How do you feel about marriage? How do you feel about sex? How do you feel about people? All these different things because Cain has to be dealt with in the things he experienced because your flesh was a part of that experience. Everywhere you go, okay, how spiritual you are, Cain go with you and he going to have something to say. Uh, and that's a great prayer. Forgive us, Father, for we know not what we do. And you're right. And we don't know what we do. This, that's why I said you got to face Cain. The first session was living while raising Cain. Well, you can't raise him if you don't face him. And there are emotional strongholds that are the part of our life based upon our expectation 
that the enemy says, that's the very thing I'm going to use to destroy you or to hold you down or to make sure you never uh, uh, leap up in God. Good to see you, Sister Crockett. God bless you. Okay, so you got to deal with that. So that's very key. So the book, the pre-order for the book is out. Please support me. And then you're not only supporting me, but you're helping uh, the belief in the faith system that the things that the devil whispers to us is not true. See, the, the devil uses Cain to whisper things in your ears. Nobody will ever believe in you. You'll never get them songs out. You'll never get the book out. You'll never start your own business. You'll never get married. You'll never have a child. Uh, you'll never have real friendship. Nobody will ever really love you. These are all the things that comes from this Cain mindset. It's carnal. It's enmity. It's why you have to bring it down. Cast out every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity to Christ. You have to bring the Cain mindset to Christ because it's the Christ mindset that gives you the power, that gives you the instructions, the wisdom, the words to override this Cain and put it under subjection. Cain would never be saved because God didn't come to save this mentality. He come to watch quicken your spirit and renew your mind. But many strongholds is holding us back from walking in the fullness of our destiny and our potential because we haven't learned how to face our emotions, okay? So I wanted to say that and all that's tied because I want to be a transparent leader. I want you to know a lot of times we can't cover one another. People say, you, you're, I'm your covering, I'm covering you. How can you cover when you don't know how I feel? You don't know where my emotions are. You don't know where the cracks is in my life, where the enemy has access into your life through that area. And people don't even know that area has not been fulfilled. I have great friends in my life that I've traveled with all over the world. And some of them, they are the most wonderful, loving, kind people as long as they are on top. As long as they're on top. If their business is doing well, if they got money in the bank, if their career is successful, they are the most lovable people. But I'm telling you, when things are not going good for them and they're not making no money, they're not traveling, they're not singing, they're not in movies, they are depressed and their depressed shows in how they treat people. They seem arrogant. They hide behind arrogance. Their ego enlarges itself when they get depressed. And they become more self-centered. They become more egotistical. They're hard to deal with. And you would not think that that's a wonderful person because he's not happy. And so you may get promoted and he's looking at you like, why are you promoted? He'll do what I used to do. Why your book out and my book ain't out? Why, why are you singing and I'm not singing? Why you got a husband and I'm still single? See, all those things. You'll go through those things because that emotion, how he feel. And he didn't know how, and she didn't know how, there was male and female, how to deal with that. And they would, they, they would perceive a different than really, really who they were. And sometimes I didn't know if the nice person was who they were or the mean person is who they were. Because should, should you only be nice when things are well? When you're feeling good, then you're treating people good. But when you're not feeling good, you treat people bad. This is what, the, what God meant when he says your continence has failed. When the falling of the continence happened, you're going to treat people differently. This is real talk. And you got to face your emotions of the hell. You are a roller coaster. You are a schizophrenic. You are Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. All depends on who touched your emotions. See, real talk, man. We walk in the day. So this is so important. You got to face, you got to deal with those things. Okay, and, and your friends need to know, okay, that you're getting emotional. My wife used to say things, and, and, and I'm just going to share a lot. I told you this week I'm going to be very transparent because I, I understand this teaching. I understand Cain. When it comes to emotional strongholds, I've lived them, walked them, embraced them, digested them. You know, real talk. And so I can share that deliverance and God is constantly delivering me from that. But I, when I first got married to my wife, that's something she would say. And it used to bother me worse when she would say it. You, you know, uh, uh, you, you and your feelings. Well, I don't want to hear I'm in my feelings when I'm in my feelings. Because if I'm in my feelings, then I don't have reason. I don't have rationale to make right, right, right decisions even when you're telling me truth. Because my feelings will be offended by your truth because I'm in my feelings. I'm not in truth. 
right now. I'm not in reasoning right now. I'm not in logical thinking right now. I am in my feelings. Didn't you just say that? And it used to bother me even worse. So then I couldn't get out of my feelings because what you did offended my feelings. So now I'm more in my feelings. See, real talk. Because the identification of your emotions, the first time, the first thing that, that flesh does the truth is attack it. Whenever you are helping people in their emotions, you must realize that the first response is not going to be thank you. It's not going to be hallelujah. The first, the first response is going to be defense back up off me. And they're going to hit you in either in words, sometimes physically, sometimes in eye movements. It's so funny. We raise our grandkids and sometimes we say something to them. They put a look on their face like, please stop. Don't, 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 shut up. That's what they're really saying. But they're not going to say it because they're 10 and 9. But you can see it. Ooh. See, real talk. And we do the same thing. This is Cain. Did you get it? Cain represents the flesh. It represents the carnal mentality. It represents trying to give God something from your own ground. Not what's required, but out of your own strength. It's the mindset, and it does what it does. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. But you have to deal with it. Have you learned to, to buy the teachings of Christ, by the word of God? Have you learned how to deal with Cain, your emotions, your feelings, in everything that you go through, how your wife didn't respond or how she did respond, what she said or what she did not say? See, we're going to get into it. Okay, so let's move into this. Uh, that was point number one. Point number one is... What does Cain mean? Okay, you got to understand that Cain is a representation of the carnal mindset, okay, of fleshly works, okay? So the question, point number one is the question, what does Cain mean? I'm giving you some. As you walk with God, he'll give you more to reveal Cain because you got to face it. What does Cain mean? He, 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 he said about carnality, religion. Why religion? Because he did present something to God. Cain is very effective in what he does. The flesh don't lie to yourself. Your carnal mind can own a company. Your carnal mind can pastor a church. He does produce. He doesn't. He just doesn't produce what God requires from him. He works from from his own mind. He doesn't operate from faith. God, whatever God requires, it only can come through faith. See, there's sometimes God put stimulations on how things operate. He says, without faith, it's impossible to please me. You can speak in tongues and you can do all this. But if you have not love, it promises you nothing. See, so God teaches us how things operate and how he requires. I require faith. See, you have to first believe that he is. See, very key. This is faith. So our offering that is given to God must be given to God. God's requirement that it comes through faith. You cannot think you can do it on your own. That's a Cain mentality. That's what I meant by saying it will be rejected. That mentality, okay, will be rejected, which is symbolic of you. Remember, people are places, nouns, people, places, and things. When I deal with that, when you deal with mindsets, you deal with people. If you say Peter, representation of faith. Abraham, representation of faith. Grace, Noah. So people, places, and things are symbolics of mindsets. Mindsets. Egypt, mindsets. Promised land, mindset. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Christ is not his last name. Christ is the mindset that Jesus had. So you have to understand the mindset of it. Cain is the mindset. He's the first symbolic of, of murder, first symbolic of hate. So when 1 John, and 1 John really gives a lot of clarifications of what's going on in Genesis. Genesis doesn't give all the details. But when you go to 1 John, you learn that Cain is of the wicked one. If you just read Genesis, you'll say Cain is of the Lord. That's what you read in, in, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. But if you go to 1 John, it gives a clarity. On that, Cain is of the wicked one. He hates his brother. He's a murderer from the beginning. All these things, and this is the mindset. Why? Because you can't kill Cain. You can't kill Cain. Cain has been marked by God, and I shouldn't say you can't kill, but there's consequences. 
Okay, because God wants us to till the ground. He said, if any man do, sevenfold to be upon him. So it's very key. So God wants us to learn how to work with our carnality. And really what God is saying is, you have to learn how to live with your experiences that bring emotional. You're going to go through things that's going to bring, em bring emotions. You got to learn how to live with it and not allow your emotion to to be higher than, than God. So cast down every imagination and thought that exalt itself. The problem with your emotions, emotion within themselves is not a sin. But when you are led, so be angry. That means be emotional about what you're going through. You have a right to be angry when things don't happen. But where does those emotions take you? Are you led by them now or are you still led by the spirit? I'm helping you because Cain is a reality. You're going to always see things in your life. You can't cut off every TV. You can't lock yourself in a house, in a room, and just stay in prayer. You have to deal with the things. You, you're in the world. Don't take them out the world, but make them one as we are one. So this is a reality. You're going to deal with that. You're going to have ups and downs. You're going to be uh, ostracized. You're going to be criticized. You're going to be rejected. You're going to deal with all of that. And there are going to be times when you're going to be the one that criticizes. And you're going to be the one that rejects. And you're going to be the one that hurt. Don't think you're everything. You are the victim. Some things you do because you are led by Cain as well. But all of us must know. Okay? All of us must know how to handle this Cain that I have to live with. But I got to face him. I got to face some things in my emotions. Woo! And I'm telling you, if you ever want to have a fight, it's when you're fighting the soul. Okay? Jesus, when he dealt with the devil, it seemed so easy. He just kept, he just said, it is written. It is written. When it comes to the devil, just it is written. It, it didn't matter about the kingdoms of the world. It is written. Turn the stone into bread. It is written. But the minute he's in the garden of Gethsemane, he has to deal with his own soul. It's him and God and what God requires. When he's dealing with God and what God requires, he sweat blood. Why are you sweating blood when it comes to the requirement of God? You didn't sweat blood when you dealt with the devil. Because I'm telling you, there's a time in your life that you can become strong in God. The dealing with the devil is easy because you have a submission to God's will. But when it comes to your own will, fighting within yourself, your greatest enemy is what's in me. It's in you, dealing with your own feelings, your own emotions. When it came to the soul, he's sweating blood. He, this is the first time that Jesus asked God, can this pass from me? Any other task that God asked him to do, he never said, let this pass. But when it came to this bitter cup, see, when it came to this bitter cup, this is a bitter experience. You want me to taste something that's going to be bitter to me. He said, let this cup pass from me, if it be your will. The disciples fall asleep. They fell asleep on it. He come back. He said, could y'all not even tear with me one hour? I can't even depend upon my, my, my inner circle to be with me when I am in my emotional. And he was in an emotional rut. It was a battle within the soul. He's sweating blood. Who sweats blood? And there's a word for it. There's a medical word for it. That when there is a battle between your soul and your, and your blood and your consciousness, that you don't know what, how to handle, it bleeds out. See? And this is a battle. You can say what you want to say. When it comes to battling, facing Cain and your emotions, this is why somebody, see, you can become very stubborn. You can become very upset because it's real. Even Jesus showed us the humanity part of the battling of the Cain, of the soul. He said, but nevertheless, not thy will, but thy will be done. We do really, Jesus was really saying, I really don't want to do this. There's some things that you got to get rid of. There's some things you got to check. There's some things you have to put under subjection. But the truth of the matter is you don't want to do them. Quit lying to yourself. You will not win this battle in your mind if you don't be honest. But I don't want to do that. I want to keep having sex. I want to lay with him. I want to lay with her. I want to still get high. I want to lie. I, there's some things you enjoy doing. See? Because, to be honest, I don't want to forgive him. I don't want to forgive her. I'm not going to forgive him. I don't want to do that. I don't want. I don't want to move past that. No. I don't want to bow down. I don't want to be humble. No, you're not going to walk over me. See, the emotion. You're not going to talk to me like that. You, 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 no, you're not. No, you're not going to use me. See, and all these 
justifications. I told you because Cain will teach you how to justify your behavior by the way you feel. By the way you feel. So I don't feel like that's right and I'm done with it. See? And Jesus had, he feel our infirmities. The Bible said he became like men. See? Real talk. But the struggle is real, but we can win the battle if we know how to apply Christ. But we first got to face it. Got to be honest with it. Okay? But he said, nevertheless, that will be done. So that's very key. I done took 35 minutes already. Okay? So let me move to, I want to read something to you. Let's go to Psalms 55. Okay? So Cain, point number one is what Cain means. What does Cain mean? The mindset. And I want God to show you the Cain that you're dealing with. What does it mean? Find out his mentality, the mindset of Cain, how it operates in you. How strong are your emotions against what God wants? Okay? Don't pick the good times. Pick the time when you fight the most. What do you fight the most over? What stronghold do you fight the most with? If you had to make a list of the most in areas that you fall in the most in your life, what will they be? Because there is some emotional process in that thing. If you have to make down for the last year, the things I know that are not biblically sound, that I live, I practice, write them down and see where, who who's winning the race. Okay, lust, and there's three things, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, three things in the world. It's one of those three, if not all three. Okay, and, and you have some emotions, some energy tied to that. Okay, Psalms 55, I was going to read verses 12 through 14, but I'm going to read verses 1 through 14, okay? Because I want you to hear all of this. Now, this, this is David. To the chief musicians, he's writing. Some theologians don't know if this is a song, uh, but I don't want you to hear his words because I want you to know, I want to encourage you. You're not by yourself when you're battling Cain, when you're facing Cain. The preacher may never tell you. The apostle may never tell you. The bishop may never tell you, but he got a king too. Everybody has emotional things, things that you hold on to, strongholds in your life because you feel so strongly about it. Okay? Real talk. Okay? Here we go. Psalms 55. And let me see. Let me get a bigger Bible. Okay, I'll stick with this. I got so many different types of Bible. Here we go. Give ear to my prayer. Okay? Now, let me take my time. I'm probably going to get no farther than this point. How much do you pray to God about this stronghold? My wife says to me all the time, and not to go too deep, but she'll say it like this. There are things about me I don't like. I don't like when I'm this way. Have you got honest about the cane that you follow that you don't like? Can you even tell yourself the truth? I don't like this way about me. When I get like this, I hate that I get that way. Now, just because you admit it don't mean you change, but at least you are. You got to first start with confession. See? What are you taking to prayer? What are you, what are you travailing? Because a lot of times we'll say, I don't like being this way. I don't, I hate when I fall into that. But you don't, you don't travail in prayer. The effectual fervent, fervent, the special fervent prayer of the righteous avail of much. How much are you travailing? See, the old people, the old saints, I hate to go back to them because we shouldn't have to, but the reality is when they had a stronghold, they would tarry for the Holy Ghost. A lot of times they're tarrying, and we know that the teaching of tarrying for the Holy Ghost was wrong, but they was tarrying for something. Sometimes you have the wrong method, but the right idea was to break some things. They believe I need the Holy Ghost, and this is what problem. Now we're not teaching the Holy Ghost. We're not teaching the power of the Holy Ghost. We're not making sure that people are walking in the fullness of the Holy Ghost, but their cane is running their life. The old folks believe that if they had the feeling of the Holy Ghost, there'd be some things in their emotions that can be under control. One of them was the tongue. They believe the Holy Ghost controls the tongue. And so they would tell you when you're young, you got a mouth on you because you don't have the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost will shut your mouth down. The Holy Ghost will tell you what not to say. Now, a lot of that is truth because no man can tame the tongue, but the Holy Ghost does. 
When the, the year of King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and he sat upon my tongues. In the day of Pentecost, he sat upon their tongues. We want tongues to speak in tongues, but we don't want the power to sit on our tongues, so we will not, watch this, speak the wrong things out of our tongues. The Holy Ghost came with fire to purge what we say. See? Because what the man speak of, watch this, out of the mouth, the man speak of what's on the heart. What you say out of your mouth is what's really on your heart. And you don't have the Holy Ghost to change, watch this, to lead you into truth so that your heart can be transformed to a heart, heart of stone. See? Very key. When David sinned against Bathsheba, he said, give me a clean heart. See? Because my actions reveal what my heart was. Oh, God. See? So if you, and I hope this lesson is waking you up to you not praying enough about your change. You ain't travailing. You ain't saying, you ain't saying like Jacob said to God, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Bless me was to change me. Jacob wasn't saying bless me with money. I'm not going to let you go till you give me a million dollars. He was saying, I'm not going to let you go until you change. Bless me is to put a word over my life. A word over my life concerning who I am. I think I'm a, I'm a trickster. My name means Jacob. I'm walking out the character of my name. I told you names. Names are symbolic. People are symbolic of a mindset. See? He said, but I'm not. Have you wrestled with God until you say, you know what? This nasty attitude, this depression I'm always going into, my emotions, I think about what, what happened to me 10 years ago and I get depressed, I get angry, I get mad. I'm suicidal, whatever the case may be. I'm self-centered. My ego, when last time you said I'm not coming off the altar until my ego is broken by the word of God that I know how to apply the word to my ego? See? Real change have to come through a wrestling. There is a wrestling. There is a wrestling. There is a wrestling. There is a wrestling. See? Cain and Abel, and really Cain and God, needed to wrestle. Then Cain and Abel needed to wrestle. Cain wasn't supposed to kill Abel, watch this, in the right way that God wants us to live. That's the example for us to learn from. He really wants us to wrestle with our brother. You don't have a friend if y'all not wrestling over y'all emotions. You don't have a real marriage if you and the, hus the husband and wife is not wrestling over y'all emotions. You got to wrestle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. See? This is real talk. Because I... And wrestling is conversations, word after word, until there's a breaking because my emotions will lead me somewhere by the way I think. You got it right, Brother Michael. I won't let you go until you call me Israel, till you change my name. That's right. Because I need something spoken to me because my emotions in how I feel, what I think I lack, I will steal a birthright. Cain tries to steal birthrights. Cain will, will con his father out of a blessing. And many people, you have a blessing because you con your fathers in the ministry. You con your fathers in on the job. You con your fathers in life. Many of you have a birthright because you stole it from your brother. You stole it from your brother. <laughs> That's it. I won't let go until I become Israel. Till I become it. And that's good, Brother Mike. You changed from call to become. That's it. Good to see you, Mama. So we got to say this. So he prayed. God, time is flying. We hit that share button. Come on, share. Invite some people out. Got about maybe uh, 15 more minutes, 17 more minutes. Watch this. Psalms 55. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not myself from my supplication. Now, it looked like the writer is about to go into prayer. He's going to talk about prayer. Good to see you, Mark. Love you, man. Hearing so many great things about you. Uh, he, he, he looked like he praying, but listen to the prayer. The prayer will, is not about hallelujah, God will bless me. Hallelujah, God will make a way. No, this ain't the prayer. He about to pray about killing his enemies. He about to pray that they're getting on my nerves. He about to pray about every one of his emotions of how he feel about his experiences. This is real. Quit having these copycat prayers. 
and the God from heaven shall reach down from the atmosphere and he shall reach into the chemistry and touch. No, that is not how you feel. Your real prayer is, Lord, they're chilling, getting on my nerves. I can't stand it. I'm tired of being alone. Uh, all these things, uh, my, I ain't making no money. I, I, I wish I would have killed him. I'm about to leave this marriage. I'm about to be done. Uh, you know what? I don't care what the Bible say. I'm going to get me a joint and get me a drink. Uh, this is real. You got to be real about how you feel. You can't come with a program prayer. I need to know what you're going through by what you're praying. Say, Lord, it's been a long time. I've been waiting five years for, for a house and a husband. And you late, God. You take too long. You got to talk. You got to have real conversations. Here we go. He says, give ear because I'm about to tell you something, God. I'm about to talk. I'm about to get real with you. Watch this. Watch this. He says, Attent attend to me and hear me. I mourn in my complaints. He said, I'm, I'm, I got so many complaints. I'm, I'm, I'm crying and mourning in my complaints. I'm complaining, complaining, complaining. Now you can't stop complaining until you're honest about your complaining. This is, you can't deal with Cain when you act like, how you doing? Blessed and highly favored. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, that ain't really how you're doing. No, no, no. That's what you believe. That's what you believe. That's what you know. I'm, I'm not asking you if you bless and highly favored. I said, how you doing? We so spiritual, we will never deal with Cain because we don't want to tell the truth. We don't want to say, how you doing? Cain kicking my butt. Cain got me lonely. Cain got me mad. Cain got me broke. Cain got me, I, I messed up all the good things that came to me. I listened to Cain. I done lost my job over Cain. I done lost, I done lost my girlfriend over Cain. My wife done walked out on me over Cain. That's what I'm doing. But I'm blessing highly favored. Hallelujah. See, you got to tell the truth. You got to come back with that positive and believe God, but you better tell the truth about your emotions. Because if you start out with a blessing highly favored and that's not really how you're doing, can't go win. You can fool people, but you can't fool yourself. Talk to me, somebody. He said, look here, I mourn in my complaint. Cain will have you mourn in your complaint. Are you honest? That's what I'm talking about, Sister Sandy. Like King David. That's what I'm talking about. We in Psalms 55. Hit that share button. Watch this. I'm mourning my complaints and make noise. I'm lying with mine. You got to be honest with your emotions. Listen, listen. I, I was too quiet with my emotions and it had me try to kill myself. I took the pills. I ain't talking about what, you know, I wanted to kill myself. No, I didn't want to. I tried it. I stood on the bridge. God interrupted it. I was preparing to jump, made my mind is over. God showed me something else. You know why? I was quiet. I remember the day I took those pills in Buffalo, New York. I wish I could remember the street. I could take you there, the house I was staying in. I was outside of my house. It was me and three preachers. And you know what I was doing? Hiding in my gift. Hiding in my gift. Hiding in my gift. I'm talking about the Lord, talking about the Bible. They, we all outside, hallelujah. Yeah, man, Doc, oh yeah, that's deep right there. Ooh, yeah, oh my God. Man, Jenkins, I'm telling you, man, man, you got revelation, yeah. And then I said this, in the midst of all of my talking real deep, hiding behind spirituality, we do that. We hide Cain behind our spiritualities. Hiding Cain. Those fig leaves, I don't want to go to it. It might be, I don't want to. Those fig leaves hide. Listen, when you when you do something wrong, the thing that you use in, in your crime, watch this. The thing you use in the crime, you hide. So if you look at, if a little kid look at something they shouldn't look at and the mother shows up, the kid does this. Because they know you shouldn't have been looking at it. If the kid tucks the, uh, the cupcake and the mother told him, don't mess with that cake, the kid does what? He hide the cake. Cover his mouth. So if the fig leaves was over the, the sexual part of their body, that means they understood that there was a level of intimacy that happened because of where they placed the covering. Covering here, covering here, you cuss. Covering here, 
Well, where did they place the covering? Which means there was a sign of intimacy. It just wasn't hiding their sexuality. It was also hiding Cain. We use fig leaves as religion. It's a man-made covering. Who made the fig leaves? Who sold them? They did. Out of the will of God. God never required for fig leaves to be their covering. That was a man-made religion. And it was the first hiding of Cain. And we hide Cain. What the, 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 the product of our thinking, we hide it under religion. We hide, that's why we're so quick to make people respect our titles. Because if we told them how we feel, they, we, we're afraid they won't see us as a bishop. If they really knew how you felt about them, they really knew how you were looking at them. You see them as ching ching, not a new member, new money coming in. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to you this morning. Come on. So we hide Cain. Religion is the greatest opium for us. We get high off of it, but we're not honest about this mindset, this Cain, this carnality, this self-motivation, this self, this self-esteem that we build ourselves. Tell yourself you're great. Live your best now. You, there's no good in you. You're not good. There's no good. There's nothing good that dwells in the flesh. Nothing good dwells in a Cain mindset. Nothing. Cain is symbolic of the flesh. It's only in the spirit. Come on now. This puts all of us in the same basket. We all have to face it. Okay? So they hide, and we hide Cain. But David's going to deal with some things here. Watch this. See? Cain hide. Got to tell the truth. Got to be honest. Out Now back to the story. I was silent. I was hiding my cane in my ability to articulate, my ability to preach, my ability to, to give you what I think you need to hear in order for me to be okay in your eyes. Many times you are hiding Cain because you want people to be your friend. And if, you, if they ever saw Cain, you are afraid they will leave you. If your wife ever saw Cain, she'll divorce you. Your husband will cheat on you. So we hide Cain because we fear loss. This is the mindset of Cain. Real talk. I hear it. So I'm talking about God. Back to my story. Okay? I'm, back. I'm, I'm in Buffalo. I'm hiding behind my preacher. But then Cain slipped out. I silently release Cain's mindset. Really what I was going, I was depressed. Can I talk to you? We ain't going to get that far today. Listen, I was at no church. See, you can say what you want to say, but when you don't have, when, see, church is not about going to church. You know why leaving church is so detrimental? You know the real reason why you can be in a terrible church and you will not leave? It can be, you know why? Because to leave church really in your spirit is to leave family. We don't really go to church. We go to a family. Church is about a support unit, seeing real brothers and sisters with like-minded minds. And so leaving the religion becomes difficult even when you know it's the right thing to do because you it seems like you're leaving family. You're leaving your connection. It's real talk, okay? Oh, God, so many points here. So I was dealing with I had no family. When I, when I, both times when I tried to kill myself, I was connected to no church. Not only was I not preaching, watch this. I had nowhere to play my drums. My drums wasn't set up. I had nowhere to play. My drums for years, my music talent was my safe haven. If I could find a studio, if I could play. When I was in, when I was in Youngstown with Brother Gil, we had a studio. I was dealing with a whole lot of depression. But I didn't take no pills. You know why? Because I had a place to, to vent. I had another place to hide. That, but that hiding place tapped on my passion. So as long as I'm playing, I can deal with some emotional things in my life. You Listen, if you get away from what you've been called to do, if you get away from what you, the love that God gave you for something, God gave you a love for singing, a love for playing the drums, a love for teaching, a love for writing, and you stop doing what you love, your pain is going to rise up and destroy you. Your emotions, you can't handle life as life without doing what you've been called to do. This is what buffers what you experience. 
I'm telling you the truth. So I had no church home. Uh-oh. Cain says I'm about to hurt you because there's no family. You have no support. I have nowhere to play my drums, my play piano. Uh-oh. You really in trouble. And then I had some issues in my life that I had no one to share that level of pain with. I asked my wife yesterday, I said, have you ever had something in your life that you never want nobody to know? You really don't understand Cain and the shame and the guilt that he brings until you have been a victim of something that is so embarrassing. So according to peoples, it's so degrading that you want to die with it so you never face it. You try to suppress it. There are people who are dealing with extreme alcoholism, extreme sexual sins. It's because of some things that Cain have allowed them to do. Some guilt that takes you to that point that you believe you are beyond repair. You are beyond understanding. It changes the perception of how you see yourself. And in, 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 in your mind, it changes the perception of how everybody see you. Have you ever did that? See, a lot of things you can't even identify with some people in their cane experience because you ain't never been that dirty, you think. You think you have never been that dirty. You think. It's real talk. I was there. Ooh. Oh. See? Real talk. And so I end up doing it. Okay. I'm not going. My time is almost up. I had. I was silent. So this is what I said. Back to my story. If you're just coming on, you got to watch the replay. Please hit the share button. Okay. Watch this. And so I said this in the middle. I'm outside in Buffalo. I have no church on. I'm not using my gift. I'm not writing. I'm not doing books. I'm not doing piano. I'm not doing drums. I'm not, I'm not around musicians. Watch this. I have some personal issues. Matter of fact, I'm going through some serious things. I felt rejected. I was dealing with depression to the hilt in my life. Watch this. And, I did, and this is what I said. I said, man, I'm tired. I said it just like that. I said, man, I'm tired. Did you hear it? Many times when Cain does speak and be honest, we're so caught up in people's gifts. We're so caught up in their false perceptions that we miss the cry of the man. Many times people are crying out for help and we're so caught up in everything else. We miss the cry. And I said, man, I'm tired. And you know what they said? They heard me. They said, man, oh, man, you'll be all right. All that word you got, oh, man, please. And I just looked at him. And in my mind, I said, as soon as we done talking about the goodness of God, as soon as we done giving God praise, I'm going to go in this house. I'm going to walk to the store. And let me tell you how deep it was. I ain't even have... I think I may have had $10. I had just enough money to buy the pills. I was counting quarters and I was so depressed that it seemed like when I'm trying to add up the money to buy the pills to kill myself, that that would have woke me up. You can't even afford to kill yourself. You're too broke to even buy the pills. But I was so depressed. Are you hearing me? My emotions, my emotions. I have. This is what I was hearing Cain say to me. You have nothing to live for. You're not playing nowhere. You're not teaching nowhere. You have no family in Buffalo. You have not one person in Buffalo that's related to you. You are alone. I hope I'm helping you this morning. You alone. Your life doesn't have any meaning anyway. Kill yourself. This is what the devil tried to do to Jesus. Jump. Jump. You're right, Brother Mike. We got to confess it and we got to be able to help each other. But you have to discern when the confession is made. Many people make the confession, but, 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 but you don't discern. I said to myself, and I went to the store. After I was done preaching, I bought the pills. 
I, got, I had a little bit of orange juice. I poured the pills in the orange juice and I drank two bottles, two full bottles of pills. I don't even know how many, I don't know how many pills is in one bottle alone. It was Tylenol 3. Two full bottles. I emptied them out. Yeah, Apostle Jenkins, the great man who has all the revelation. Yeah, my emotions, my my feelings, my expectations. I listened to Cain. Cain caught me by myself. Cain caught Abel by himself. He caught me by myself. And I took him. Woo! Did you hear me? See? Real talk. People who, three preachers left my house. Real talk. So, I'm going to stop here. We'll pick up tomorrow. Psalms 55. Holy Spirit, you know who's dealing with this level of depression and their emotions right now. God, you know who's hurting. There's some people who are listening right now. You're crying. You're trying to hold back the tears. It's you. You want to tell somebody about your cane. You want to tell somebody about your cane. Lord, give us ears to hear, our brothers and our sisters. You send a paraclete, Holy Ghost, help us, lead us and guide us into truth. Oh, God, I'm praying for you. You don't have to do it. You can face Cain and live. You can face Cain and, 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 and fulfill your destiny. God will give you the power to stand. But you got to take on the mind of Christ. You got to be honest. Lord, I'm praying when these real conversations, when you have to face yourself, the 11th chapter of our lives, when one faces one, when we sitting in the pig's pen and we wishing that we can have what the pigs are eating, Lord, let that, let allow that situation to wake us up to what's in the father's house. That we're not led by our emotions. We're not led by this carnality of Cain. Free us. Lord, and I thank you. Just like you brought me out, you'll bring them out. Just like you taught me how to put my Cain under subjection. Thank you, Lord. And can I tell you something? I have learned. I have learned. It took me almost 50 years of my life, I would almost say 54, 53 years of my life, that if I don't never be a part of a local church, I don't have to kill myself because I feel like I don't have family. If I never play the drums again, the other day I went to the music store, with me and my wife, we went, to the, we went somewhere, and then I stopped at the music store, and it was the first time this ever happened to me in my life. I knew it was God. The first time it ever happened. I went to the music store, I sat on the drums, I played one little beat like that, 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 and I put the sticks down. And I realized that I didn't need my drums to live. It's the first time in my life that I realized that I didn't need my drums to live. I'm happy. Me and wife, we having a good time. Shut this door. Matter of fact, I'm going to stop and I'm going back and get with her. And we're going to have the rest of the day. We're going to have a wonderful day. For the first time. That, that my drums wasn't God. Woo. See? So the other day, I put my studio together. And, and, and usually, if I, my studio looks real nice right now. It looks the best it ever looked. There would have been a time in my life that there's no way in the world I would not have recorded. I got to record something in this new nice studio. No, I'll get to it. Because that... It's in him I live and move and have my being. You can't, you can't use even positive things to destroy me anymore, Cain. I don't have to play to be, live life. I don't have to make a lot of money to be happy. I don't have to drive a Mercedes Benz. I don't have to. No, in him, Cain, you're not going to make me work for joy. 
The requirement is not how well I can work, how well I can sing, how well I can preach, how well, how well I, I can make money, how well I can raise family, how well I can pass, uh, I can get degrees. No, no, no. My victory is in him. Very key. So God bless you. We'll see you tonight in my father's house. Don't miss it. Powerful word from Prophet James Summers. We're dealing with watchmen and gatekeepers. Life-changing message. Really going to help you. See you tonight, 7 o'clock. And then we'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, same time, same place, part three. I'm telling you, this, this is blessing me. Just to think back, you know, I know God has healed me. There was a time that I would have told this story and I would have been crying while I told it. Oh, my emotions still would not have been totally healed. That I couldn't even talk about what I was delivered without it delivering me back to where I was. But I'm in a place now. I can tell the story without the tears. Uh-oh, because I've been delivered. I have the power over. I have the power to become the sons of God. <laughs> while Cain is still alive. He's just not operating. Oh, he's not. I consider him as dead. <laughs> That's another lesson. God bless you. I love you. See you tonight at 7 o'clock. And see you tomorrow morning. Same place, same time. Walk in God's favor.